OK, so in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the April 20th meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Slade if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Causey. Ms. Hen. Present. Ms. Mack. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. And just to confirm, Mr. Kuhn is joining late, but I just wanted to make sure he was not present. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Slade, would you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mr. Hartlove. Present. Ms. Howie. Here. Mr. Tantliff. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Thank you all. Thank you. Our first item of business is Office of Law Expenditures. Mr. Tantliff, would you please review the information regarding the Office of Law Expenditures, which has been provided in board docs? Sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm on mute, or is that, do I sound buzzy? I'm hearing you sound there. I think someone's windy, someone sounds windy. If they could mute. Okay, so here's a very typical report um, that we pulled for the uh, law office. Any, uh, we were sending this around to all the offices and um, anyone who works in Advantage. Uh, we've restored access to most people. I don't know if it's completely available yet, but um, this is a typical report. Uh, Mr. Kuhn had requested that we review the law office budget and expenditures. So this is FY um oh this here's fy22 and if we need to we also have fy20 and 21 available and i believe uh that those two reports which were not originally in board docs will get added uh tomorrow in case they're needed um so uh, and what you'll see is is the law office has their budgets really very flat other than salary Call is over the last few years. I'm going to make this just a tad smaller um, so we can see the whole report. So if you go through this, it, it really, um, their, their budget is really pretty modest, uh, pretty bread and butter day to day expenditures. And um, Ms. Howie was uh, available, and as as you know, she's here too. If anyone has any particular questions of her, particularly on the law contracts, uh, she'll be happy to answer. Um, but you can see the the largest expenditures here are for litigation, as you'd expect. The total budget for the law office is 1.42 million this year. 882,000 expended, 117,000 encumbered. Uh, and in case anyone doesn't recall, encumbered means uh, the money's been set aside with a purchase order and invoices have not yet come in to um, use those funds. So at the moment, the law offices from a couple weeks ago had $419,000 remaining. And uh, this is a, 
um, a report called the PO640, which lists all of the purchase orders that are active right now in the office. You can see right here in the left, the 198,000, that was the initial value of the sum of the POs that have been submitted. 80,462 uh, dollars have been paid out on those, which leaves 100 and just about $118,000 available on these contracts. Um, and you can see uh, almost all of these are uh, legal related contracts. Um, that's what all the 2831 objects are. So uh, that's pretty much it on uh, their POs. So I, I'm not sure if there's any particular questions, but you can see the their other line items are really very modest things that we have in almost every office around the central office. Um, phone stipends, uh, other supplies and materials, mileage reimbursement, uh, some professional libraries and dues. Um, here, of course, are salaries, which are the bulk of uh, the budget, uh, a million out of the 1419, 1.045 million out of the 1.42 million is just salaries. Um, and then 353,000 is uh, budgeted for legal services. So you can see uh, Ms. Howie has very little dollars available other than for salaries and legal contracts. Um, so that's my initial presentation on that. Uh, we can look at the prior years. The budget's only really gone up by a very small amount each year, which really is just taking into account salary uh, colas in her uh, office. Uh, so with that, I'll be glad to turn it over for any questions, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff, for this information. I'll now call on each committee member for questions. Ms. Mack. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Tantliff, for this. Um, I have a few quick questions. Um, as a former phone company employee, how many um, employees does the 2250 cover for a phone stipend? That's uh, nice. The 2250 would cover probably two employees. But there's varying amounts for the stipend, but looking at it, uh, that's about what it would cover. So the employee pays the bill and we reimburse the employee? No, the phone stipend program at BCPS um, uh, delivers a certain stipend to cover the phone and it's not a reimbursable. You don't need to expense it or show what, uh, you know, costs you've incurred. You just get receive that stipend each month. OK, um, thank you. And then could you please elaborate on what is in other supplies and materials for six thousand dollars? Well, that could be pads, papers. Uh, you might order a mouse or a pad, something from Office Max. Could be a standing desk. Um, lots of legal yellow pads. I, I'm I'm not sure, but it's it's really just stuff to keep the office running. An extension cord, power strip. Okay, and then. I'm trying to differentiate in my mind between salaries and then on the page where we show litigation fees. Um, I have it up on another screen. I think 200 and. Hold on. This one right here. Yes, so. When we have hearings and we have the superintendent's designee speak, does that person's cost get covered in salaries under the law office or in legal services? And if it's not in legal services, what would be an example of what's in legal services? So uh, Ms. Mack, for example, when you have uh, oral argument that's presented to the board, 
uh, you receive the full record. That oh. record includes the transcript. Transcription costs are included in legal services. Um, any hearing examiner costs, if there's been a hearing examiner assigned, the payment to the hearing examiner is under legal services as well. Uh, and as I said, transcription costs. Trans transcription costs do not only include uh, for the for the uh, administrative hearings, but arbitrations as well, and then your board meetings. Um, okay. We can also cover the costs of those transcripts as well. When we've had arbitrators, uh, when we've gone to mediation, all of those costs are under legal services. Okay, thank you. And then I just have one question. Um, and I think we're going to get information on this. When, we, when there are settlements, for whatever reason, with parents or with anybody, it, would that show up as a legal office expenditure? And if not, where would that show up? So for special education uh, settlements, for example, those are right. not part of the law office budget. There are and have been some settlements in the past that have been placed in 2831. It would depend on the type of settlement. If it's a salary payout that would come out of a uh, salary, would not come out of the law office budget. So it, I'm sorry to be um, lawyer-like, but it does depend. I'll uh, just add to that that <clears throat> most of the settlements which have to do uh, with an IEP that was not followed perfectly and so uh, we settle instead of go to court which often um, might cover um, out uh, you know private placement expense there's a line item in this in the special ed department that absorbs all of those expenses. OK, thank you and thank you again for this and thank you, Ms. Howie, for your answers. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Ms. Mack. And before I go to Mr. McMillian, I had a follow up since Ms. Mack asked my question and that also had to do with settlements. And to Mr. Tantliff, you began to answer my question and that had to do with the budgeted amounts for those settlements and how do we project what may be required because I would imagine that would be very difficult to foresee what um, litigation expenses we may um, incur. So I'm curious as to how that process works and it sounds as if that depends on um, the area. It would be department specific, for instance, special ed in the example that was just um, given. Is, is that the case and can either you or Ms. Howie speak to how we would go about that? Is that something risk management would assist with or may perhaps? Is that something you could address? How do we um, budget for those risks? So to the extent that there's a crystal ball, um, unfortunately that's what has to be used. Uh, it is impossible and I, I believe this is in our budget narrative almost every year. Uh, it's impossible to predict exactly the uh, the scope of certain settlements. Uh, we just don't know in most cases where they're coming from, from which direction. If they're covered by MABE, if we're talking MABE expenses, then that would not hit our budget. Uh, but it it is quite difficult uh, to know unless there is some sort of multi-year agreement that uh, settlements be paid out over several years. Uh, but I haven't seen one of those in a good 10, 15 years. Okay. Is is this an area, and this may be a topic for a future um, budget committee meeting or possibly internal audit meeting, as this came up in the recent audit committee discussions around risk management. I see an overlap between that and the work of this committee in understanding how the board can um, identify or better polish our crystal ball, if you will, to um, project or foresee at least those costs or uh, possible expenditures that would not be covered under our MABE insurance and how do we um, encounter that? Are there areas in which we have um, incurred unforeseen settlement expenditures and 
what is the opportunity cost or what areas are being affected by any unforeseen expenditures. Um, I wouldn't anticipate that being the case um, given our fund balance, but is that a risk that this board needs to be aware of and should we be planning for that contingency in our budget or are we adequately planning for that? And again, I'm, I'm throwing these out as food for thought for the committee members and for potential future topics of discussion. Um, are we adequately planning for um, this as a risk in our budget, given the fact that other areas could be in jeopardy should something big hit that is not covered by insurance? Or are we adequately covered by insurance? So I think MAPE has served the school system very well. Um, and just in terms of economies of scale, um, a little bit of uh, comparison. Uh, Baltimore City Schools, which is not uh, represented uh, by the group insurance pool, not a member of the group insurance pool, uh, but is smaller than Baltimore County uh, Schools, um, there are 16 attorney positions and 26 positions in their law office, although they do have several other offices that are part of their law office. Uh, Prince George's County, which is a little bit bigger as well, but does workers comp, has six attorney positions and four support positions. So in terms of the kind of um, resources that are being placed in your legal office as opposed to in your schools, I think that the school system, and certainly my charge has been to try to make sure that as many, um, as much as possible uh, in terms of resources goes to a school and doesn't come to a central office uh, because that's where that's where the magic happens. Uh, so I, I find it very difficult. We find it very difficult to uh, be a predictor. Um, I think that one thing that I can consider and certainly will do for future board updates is uh, if there's litigation on the horizon uh, in my quarterly updates uh, to the board to make sure you're aware that if there's a price tag that will be hitting this budget that I'll make sure that that's something that is is provided to the board as information. That's helpful. Thank you, Ms. Howie. And my final question before moving on, um, Mr. Tantliff, you spoke to the trends of contracted legal services. Um, you may not have this information and, and that's fine off the top of your head, but um, are we looking at a relatively flat um, projectile of those expenses year over year or relative to to other expenses? Or are you, is there a trend you're seeing that would um, be noteworthy to the board or not? Not necessarily, or is that something you could get back to us on? I, are you just talking about these line items that we are discussing earlier? Um, the use of legal services specifically. Um, Under uh, litigation. Uh, here we could look real quick. Two six two eight three one. So here. So I do expect two eight three one to increase, um, or the cost there to increase. One reason being a change in uh, the law. 6202 was amended two years ago, three years ago, to permit uh, certificated employees to seek arbitration instead of going to uh, an administrative hearing before one of your hearing examiners. And we've seen a fivefold increase uh, in the last year alone. Uh, arbitration costs are significantly um, steeper than uh, hearings, than your administrative appeals. And while the statute provides that the appellant, uh, the teacher must pay, the teacher only has to pay the teacher's share when the teacher loses, which means that if a teacher has lost his or her job, they're responsible for what could be um, a seven to eight thousand dollar price tag. So that's going to be hitting uh, and we have currently, I believe, six arbitrations scheduled in the next four months. 
So those costs I do see is, is going up in the next several months. The budget itself has been flat for the three years. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, okay, thank you. Mr. McMillian, and then I see Ms. Causey has joined us, so. Yeah, please let Ms. Causey go first, thank you. Sure, Ms. Causey. Good afternoon and thank you. Um, I appreciate this presentation. I did have a question about a um, unit name called Ombudsman, and I wondered if um, someone could unpack that. Sure, the Ombudsman's office in prior years uh, was the office that was responsible for supporting the ethics review panel. When the ethics review panel functions moved to at least the the office um, moved to the law office with the administrative assistant the budget string names just never changed but all of those costs are um, for the ethics review panel expenses which mainly go to uh, making sure that we give them at least a sandwich when they come for the ethics review panel meetings Okay, so prior there was an ombudsman that helped facilitate before issues were brought to ethics review panel? So uh, I would say in 90, perhaps it was 95, it was just when uh, Dr. Berger exited. Uh, the, the board at the time hired an ombudsman directly and that individual was not an employee of the school system that individual and if you like i can certainly see if i still have the files miss causey but as i recall uh, the individual's main task was to uh, take and funnel complaints from parents and from members of the public um, as well as employees i recall um, the individual put a notice in the Baltimore Sun uh, and indicated that people could come directly to him. I would say in 97, perhaps, that function was brought into the school system and folded into the superintendent's office, even though the ombudsman was the ombudsman to the board. The ombudsman at the time was Ms. Risa Schuster, who is a former principal of Towson High School, I believe. Ms. Schuster, in addition to um, serving the panel, because we did not have an ethics panel, because the, the board's policy, the board did not have an ethics policy, and all of the ethics questions were handled by the Baltimore County government and their <coughs> ethics commission. Once a policy was written, and as I said, I think that was 97, perhaps. Once the policy was written, Ms. Schuster acted as the staff to the ethics review panel. And in addition to her, um, her duties with the ethics review panel, as ombudsman, she also served as the superintendent's designee. So um, members of the committee, if you think about some of the hearings, some of the administrative appeals that you've participated in and the superintendent's designee issuing uh, decisions on behalf of the superintendent, that's what Ms. Schuster did. So she had several divergent duties, if you will. Um, after Ms. Schuster retired, uh, it was Dr. Betoff who took over that function and then I believe it was in 2012, 2013 is when that ombudsman position was eliminated. There was a hearing officer position that was created so that just one person without ties to the board would hear the superintendent's cases. Uh, so that's a little bit of history about the ombudsman position and the, um, the evolution of the position. Okay, so currently those funds um, are supporting the ethics review panel. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That was um, that was helpful. And um, Mr. McMillian can go now. Thanks. 
Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you very much. However, I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe um, Mr. Kuhn will be joining us momentarily. So any other questions um, from board members? Ms. Mack? I'm fine, Ms. thank you. Ms. Causey? Uh, yes, I did have one other question. So there were, there's a line item for professional dues. Does that include the MABE uh, LSA legislative services? No, ma'am. It does so not. Those, okay. So those That's dues are paid out of the board's budget. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So what were, what are those professional association dues? American Bar Association, National School Boards Association, Council of School Attorneys, uh, Baltimore County Bar Association, Maryland State Bar Association. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The next item of business is standard operating procedure suggestions for the Board of Education Legal Services Expenditures. This is a follow-up to the corrective action plan for the OIGE case 21-0003-1. Mr. Tantliff, would you please provide the committee with suggestions for the Board of Education Legal Services Expenditures, which was provided in board docs? Sure. Uh, so uh, myself with some help from uh, staff members, we put a template together uh, for the committee. And I think this would be something that we could have some dialogue uh, now. And then uh, the onus is uh, really on the board to develop uh, the SOP that they, you know, uh, wish to have. And Ms. Gover, I think, you know, can pull it together from an administrative standpoint. Um, so, you know, what we understood the task was after reading the finding is a procedure to outline budget management practices for the office of board uh, for the board. Uh, and so we kind of wrote down a number of different steps here you can see. Uh, so the action, all current and known expenses will be identified and summarized in an Excel budget tracking workbook. Um, and we can supply what we use for the schools and what some of the offices use. Um, Ms. Gover would be on point uh, to do that, as do similar positions in offices and uh, the schools, even though they may be more junior. Um, Advantage financial reports uh, run on a regular basis. I think the board is getting them now. So uh, really it's putting your budget together, projecting your expenses for the year, and then accurately keeping track of your expenses as they hit. You can't really, what you can't do in advantage is project upcoming expenses. It's just a static look at your budget and year-to-date expenditures and encumbrances. Um, third item, tracking workbook and advantage financial reports will be reviewed with the board chair or the board uh, budget committee, whichever uh, is the right answer. Agenda item will include a review of the legal services rendered because I think legal services uh, was uh, the main issue that went over budget, but uh, really managing and projecting legal services is the same as every other line item in the budget um, that you'll be uh, incurring. Agenda item will include review of all non-legal expenditures to date and future expenditures uh, required. And again, Ms. Gover would, since she is the only staff member, would be on point to uh, pull the report together and put the tracking in the workbook. It's not uh, that cumbersome a process and we of course could train her which we do all the time uh, for the schools and the offices as needed um, any budgetary shortfalls identified will be forwarded to the board chair and the budget committee chair um, and on copy you know uh, we have myself there that that may or may not be necessary and if a bat is needed or a, a budget line transfer that feeds the bat, um, that could be requested. And that that's really it. It's just sort of a bread and butter. You know, if you just go at a high level, uh, first you start with putting your budget together, 
which Ms. Gover does uh, now with uh, however much input she gets from the board. Um, you'd have some back and forth, figure out what expenditures you have, um, make sure the budget is adequate. If uh, the target we provide called the mark is not adequate, there you'd put in a request during the budget process for additional funds. Um, and then as the year uh, goes and your budget's, you know, fairly, fairly modest and manageable. You would keep track of your expenditures and projections and just do it regularly. That's really the key here. So that's really uh, it in summary. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. Happy to take any questions. Great. I'll now call on each committee member for questions, beginning with Ms. Causey. Thank you, Ms. Hen, and um, thank you for the work in the presentation. Uh, I guess my question is what um, what recommendations of public works were considered in um, developing this and also um, a piece of the corrective action plan was having standard operating procedures related to procurement for the board um, and I don't really see any of that here so is and my understanding is um, that had not yet been developed, but also that in public works, it was identified that the procurement manual for the Office of Procurement was not yet up to date. So, so when was causing the scope of the scope of Mr. Tantliff's and this agenda item is specifically to make recommendations around the budget management practices, not procurement. So we are reviewing specifically budgetary management practices and the recommendations around the budget itself, not procurement of legal services. So if you okay. have questions specific to the budget recommendations that were made, we can address those. Yes, well, yes. given okay. one of the issues was that procurement, it was um, put forward that procurement was um, implemented with, with that in, without the budget, being there so that's that where i'm that. trying to draw the connection of how can we you know really consistently um manage the budget properly and and a piece of that is is a procurement i understand and that's a separate issue um outside of the budget um piece itself okay so is that we're not we're not discussing Another item that we can bring in a different meeting because Pro procurements outside the scope so yes that will we'll need to determine where that should be discussed but it's outside of this agenda item do you have any questions specific to these budget rec these budget process recommendations um, that presented well, I think there should be some at least uh, placeholder of tying procurement to ev evaluating the budget a lot. So this is this does not include the procurement process. This is specific to tracking our budget and expenditures against budget. Okay. Okay. You can you can move to someone else then. Okay, Miss Mack. At this time, I don't have questions. I may submit some um, in writing. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. No, thank you. OK, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Tantliff, and I don't have any questions um, other than I guess what would you recommend to be next steps? And is this you'd mentioned this would be training that I imagine your team would provide to Ms. Gover? Um, would that yeah, be I think, a recommendation? I, I um, I know Ms. Gover is familiar with the reports. Um, we could certainly do any training. We can meet with her and um, see if there's some tools we can give her, like the tracking workbook, um, give her some training, um, and then go through kind of best practices that we have, which uh, she may be doing some, she may not be doing some. So that would be uh, very easy to take care of. We'd have, you know, a meeting, follow-up meeting is needed. 
Um, and then, you know, I think it'd be very easy to to keep this on track going forward. It's really just awareness in the end and, and knowing to look regularly and project accurately. OK, thank you. May I have a motion to recommend to the full board the implementation of the recommendations um, as outlined here for budgetary management practices? So moved, Mac. Thank you, Ms. Mac. Is there a second? I'll second it, Rod McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Slade, may I have any discussion? Thank Mr. you, Ms. Yes, I was just going to ask um, a couple quick questions. One, does there need to be any modification to the job description for the senior executive assistant to incorporate uh, these responsibilities? And is and there is a change that's required for the board handbook or does this need to be included in um, a policy? So in, in terms of responsibilities, I, I don't believe so, but we can certainly um, ask that during full board discussion when we take it to the full board, since we will have staff available to address that question as well as um, your other questions. We, we can make the recommendation as a committee to the full board and then ask those questions. Those are all great questions and address them as a full board. If you're comfortable making the if we're comfortable making the recommendation as a committee. I don't want to speak for HR, but um, and in terms of the follow up updating um, the handbook with this, I, I think is a great suggestion um, or SOP because I know that that is um, already in the process of being updated, so that may be sufficient as far as policy. Um, I believe this is operational, so it would not need to go into board policy specifically. OK, thank you. And I'm comfortable moving it forward. Um, just uh, with perhaps additional information being provided as. Um, being pertinent by staff or. Committee leadership. Sure, and and in terms of the, the position description, it it seems to fit the current um, description, but we we can certainly confirm. Great, Ms. Slade, may, any other discussion before we call a roll call vote? Mr. Tantliff? Uh, I would just say this document uh, needs to be cleaned up a little if it's going to be the final, because there's a few questions in there, some stuff in red. Uh, so I just want to make sure the motion isn't to send this specific document as is. I just want would want to just take a little time to Go over it again, clean it up, verbiage, format, you know, minor things. Sure. I think um, unless there are any objections, I'm I'm comfortable with sending the final version of this as cleaned up by Mr. Tantliff to the full board um, without further um, approvals. Any objections? Just a clarification. Uh, mm-hmm. Ms. Ms. Mack, would it, would it come to Mr. Kuhn to send out, how would it be sent out to the full board and with what cover to explain what we're attempting to do? Um, I would add it to the agenda at a, a full at the next full board meeting and Mr. Kuhn would present it as a budget committee update with a recommendation from the committee for the board to adopt. And it would be lo uploaded into board docs. Correct. OK, all right, I, it was just a process question. Thank you. Sure. Any other discussion before we vote? OK, hearing none, Ms. Slade, may I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Matt, um, I'm sorry, Ms. Hen, would you please repeat the motion for the record? Sure. I move that the committee recommend to the full board the adoption of the budgetary management practices as recommended for the Office of the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. For voting on the motion, Ms. Hen. 
Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. And has Mr. Kuhn joined the meeting? I Is have. I, I, I just joined. Um, I'm going to just abstain since I'm just joining and, and you guys have had discussion, so. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. So with that. Mr. Kuhn, would you like me to turn it over to you or would you like me to continue? Keep driving. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So thank you, Mr. Tantliff. With that, that brings us to our next item on the agenda is union contract scenarios and the impact on the budget. Um, Mr. Tantliff, please provide the committee with the union contract scenarios and the impact on the budget, which was provided in board docs. Sure. Um, can everyone see my spreadsheet? Yes. Um, OK. So um, what we were just trying to show here, and it was really just so committee members could conceptualize what it means, you know, what does 1% call or really mean in terms of dollars? And, you know, of course we see it rolled up as line items uh, in the budget, but we have a few different scenarios in here, two, four, six, eight percent uh, The dollars here were the current year salary projections and not the budgeted FTEs, but the, but the actual staffed FTEs at a point in time. Um, and so what you can see here, and this is just a full, this is a very simple model. So it's showing uh, here's how much the FY22 salary is. Uh, here's how much a step would cost. Um, Here's the carryover part of the call. And if board member, uh, committee members, uh, just as a reminder, um, the 2% call of this year was granted as of January 1st, 2022. So <clears throat> half a year of that is not in our base. And so that is kind of new money you know, because if you think about our budget, here's how much we spent this year. This is how much more we need next year. Well, we haven't spent the July through December part of the COLA. So we need extra money in the budget to cover that because it's not in our base. And this was uh, the board approved it and it's in the budget the CE proposed. Um, so that's just with the carryover. Uh, so that was essentially mandated. That wasn't optional. And then here's adding 2% what the total is. And so with just a 2% call of that increases our expenditures by about 45 million or 4.8%. And uh, what we add, Mr. Kuhn and I added here was just, what does that mean for starting teacher salary? Um, as of July 1st, it's 52,927. So that's step one, grade one, brand new undergrad, no experience. So with a 2% call of, that goes up to just about 54,000. Uh, also as a reminder, as a result of the blueprint legislation on uh, in FY27, so on uh, July 1st, 2026, starting teacher salaries across the state need to be exactly $60,000 or more. Step one, grade one. Um, and so these scenarios here, this just is, does the same thing as above, but with a 4% COLA step and the carryover, that ends up increasing our salary base by just about 7%. Teacher, starting teacher salary would go to 55,000. If there was a 6% COLA, um, and you know, you could think of this in terms of multiple years, but with a 6% COLA, that gets its starting teacher salary to 56. The increase would be 82,000 or almost 9% of the salary base. And then this last scenario is 8%, same thing, gets you to 57,000. Um, and that's an increase of 101 million. Uh, this is a pie chart that's in the budget book. Um, the <coughs> sub there of 83% is not, but in the FY22 budget, 83.1%. 
of the general fund budget is salaries and benefits. Um, and after this, if there's time, Mr. Kuhn um, mentioned it's not on the agenda. We can add it into board docs tomorrow. I can show you a summary of what the CE um, proposed in his budget versus what the board proposed. I think that's going to be an agenda item <coughs> next month, but I'd be glad to go through that quickly. Um, and if you hadn't heard what the CE's proposal is for all bargaining units except AFSCME. Well, AFSCME got this too, but they got something extra, but pretty much everyone got a step increase July 1st and a January 1st 3% COLA. The board uh, had proposed a July 1st 4% COLA and some restructurings. He didn't improve the restructurings except a modest one for AFSCME to remove the bottom step and add one extra step on top. So uh, that was kind of the gist of it. It was just really to help board members conceptualize. Oh, and I didn't mention here's the number of filled positions. I didn't mention the numbers, but you know it was almost 14,000 in the fall uh, when the these baseline data was pulled. So it's a lot of money. Even a two percent call uh, ends up. Uh, it's just it's a lot of dollars, um, and over time, you know, there's going to be pressure if inflation stays where it is. Uh, Mr. Kuhn had shared with me uh, just the Social Security projections. They're talking about, uh, I think, almost 8% cost of living increase. Um, so that's putting pressure on wages uh, everywhere right now. Local and state government uh, is in pretty good shape financially, but that could turn, you know, um, so we'll see. So with that, I'll be glad to take any questions. Um, and like I said, if we want, we can take a quick look at what the CE proposed versus uh, the board, if you like, or we can just wait till next month. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. I am interested in seeing that comparison. If if you could go through it quickly after board members have a chance to um, ask their questions and we could go through it in more detail next month, that would be helpful. Sure. I, I know yeah. I'm getting a lot of questions about it and just would like to to understand it better myself. Um, so that would be very helpful. And thank you for this information. This this format's great. And and I think seeing it this way um, is very clear. So thank you for, for pre preparing this and providing it for us. Sure. Um, Ms. Causey, would you like to start? Do you have any questions? Um, thank you. Yes, I agree. This is a very helpful presentation and um, related to the one page document that is available on board docs as a public document. Um, it has the pie chart and it has 1 million and additional dollars, 62.7% as salaries and wages. And then it has a 26.5% other charges. So are the benefits included in that other charge category? Yes. The purple wedge? That's the majority of that category. So the majority of that category. OK. And um, what else is in that category? Um, um, other than uh, I, I could. Wouldn't that yeah, wouldn't be that. things like uh, like uh, system insurances and things like that as well? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's some other it's it's predominantly fixed it's predominantly employee benefits but there are a few yeah. other things like that 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 fit that don't fit into supplies and materials equipment uh contracted services or salaries they're just that's kind of it's a catch-all for those those things but as mr tantless said the majority is is uh, employee benefits okay great thank you that's all for now thank you mr kuhn Um, thank you. Just so we're clear, I'm 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 looking at what you've provided. And <clears throat> everything is the same except for the final column. Um, or is the salary with FY23 COLA, that column looks like it does change um, as you go down and look at the different variations of what 
the adjust the cola adjustment is right so so yeah. just so we're clear right so that the the two percent um the two percent ends up equaling um on the teacher salary scale here 53 or practically fifty four thousand dollars right for right and here's here's what it is right now you can see right okay. below all right um and just so that i'm reading this right the the salary with fy 23 cola that so if we look at the four percent item right that those amounts include a four percent you know jump from the, the baseline salary is that is that accurate I just want to make sure I'm reading it right. Yeah, this number is this with the two percent added, and then this column adds up D, E, and F, D, E, and F. Okay. All right. Yeah, so we could have added a column, maybe even clear the value of the two percent cola. Itself. Yeah, I'm trying to call it's, out. That's yeah. Yeah. It's merged into here, so it's really. It's 83.7 minus 82.1 would have been a column I could have added to say COLA impact. Okay. Because part of just by looking at this straight percent growth, we could just see the outsized impact um, that there is. I mean, you, you can easily see it because of the number of employees and, and the bulk of the pay, you know, going to TABCO. Um, the teachers, right? So as that grows, um, the impact, the overall magnitude grows. So that's that's kind of what I was trying to get to here. And as everybody's aware, inflation is on a tear. Um, that's why I asked for the 8% because we're literally at 8% inflation right now. And if we were to just keep up with inflation, um, starting teacher salary would be you know, quickly jump up to fifty-seven thousand dollars, and that's a few years before, you know, we hit uh, FY twenty-seven. So, you know, the base salary may be a moot point by that point in time. Um, so, I just wanted to illustrate that. That's really what all this questioning was about. So, I have no further questions here uh, on this on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Um, thank you, Ms. Hen, um, and thank you, Mr. Tantliff. And you may have answered this question already, and I just didn't hear the answer, but the statement from the county executive said the teachers will see a pay increase of 6.5% or around $4,000. Um, but doesn't that amount get cut in half depending on when they get that increase? Um, well, uh, he's counting the step, which is July 1st, it steps for teachers. In aggregate, it varies at each grade, but it's about 1.8%. And then he was probably uh, including the 3% on January 1st because um, he was probably saying, sometime during the year that's how much the total increase will be so that's uh so 1.8 3 is 4.8 and then basically the half year uh impact of the this year's uh you know cola adds like another percent to that so it's you know the math more or less works out i think that's probably uh, how they how they did it. I don't know off the top of my head, but that's basically the components. No, and of course, I'm not asking you to speak for the county executive, yeah. but what I'm trying to clear up is, is the fact that if, if I got a 3% increase, but I didn't have it for the full year, I'm only getting a 1.5% increase. I think um, this is the best way to think about it next I'm january sorry. 1st i'm sorry okay. no no you go ahead i need the best way to think about it okay the, the way i would think about it if i was a teacher is next january 1st my salary will be roughly 
4.8% higher than it is this year because I'll have a 3% call uh, and I will have gotten a step that on average is 1.8%. It's worth less for some and more for others. So, you know, the CE is counting some other things in there, but on average for a teacher, that's that's how I would consider my salary a year from now. Okay, and I, I just want to make a point that you can't really help, but teachers have missteps. So I'm not even sure we're at the point where we're making them whole. So it's, I, I, I appreciate this information, but I maybe look at it a little differently. So thank you very much. Sure. I think there and was thank just you one for that example, because it is a valid example, but it's not a valid example when teachers haven't gotten step increases as you know, every year. So, but th thank you very much. Uh, I believe there's only one year in the past, at least 10 plus that they didn't get a step. That was two years ago. Uh, yeah, I knew it had been since I was on the board. So yeah. thanks, Mr. Tantliff. Sure. Thank you. Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. Okay, Ms. Causey, you had another question? Thank you. Just quickly, I wanted to dovetail with Mr. Kuhn's um, line of questions. I think it would be helpful to uh, insert what Mr. Tantliff said was possible, a column where the difference is um, clarified and also related to the um, distinction of the county executive's announcement. Um, is it possible for our fiscal services staff to ask for clarification from the county executive uh, as to what those calculations are, because I think that our um, employees are looking to us to uh, make decisions and it would be helpful to understand that. Is that possible? Um, I can ask uh, my counterpart over there um what they used in theory to come up with that point which i'm you know i'm sure there's very valid things that went into that that some may consider and some may not but we we can ask the question and see if they can come up with something thank you and then for um teachers that may be evaluating uh which districts to work in um when there are publications about starting salary, is there an asterisk that says um, July 1st, here's the salary, but then January 1st, it's going to bump up by X percentage point. Is that available anywhere? Because as we are recruiting, uh, we have staff that are working very diligently recruiting. Um, where is that information that they can show uh, what is the best um, that we're able to offer at these different points in time. That would probably be best directed as HR and how they're doing their recruiting. And I can't speak to uh, that's the, you know, question. A specific table. But it should, we certainly should highlight it though. And, and I'd imagine recruiters, you know, we would be when we're recruiting what the salary will go up to. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. That brings us to our next item. Um, Ms. Hen, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. I, I, I do have one further question. Sure. Go ahead. I just, I, I just want to understand timing. Uh, Mr. Tantliff, when, for instance, the COLA and the um, <clears throat> steps aren't occurring at the same time, right? then one or the other would actually end up being greater, right? So if for instance, you know, you got a you got a 5% increase as COLA, and then on top of that, you know, six months later, you get a 1.8% increase due to a step. Well, that, that step is on the base 5% increase you just got, correct? Well, the step actually happens first so um you know so uh the current scale t because remember the scale doesn't change for a step the person moves to the next step 
The only thing that changes on the pay scale is the COLA. So in other words, the scale that's in effect today will be in effect July 1st, and most teachers advance in uh, July, a chunk of them also uh, advance like in January, but so the majority of them, wherever they're sitting on the pay scale today at the current pay scale, they'll move up one step. And then on January 1st, that step will increase by 3%. Okay, and then just real quick, you said that some advance July 1st and some in January. Why Why the difference? I think it's based on when they were hired. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Committee members, any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, the next item of business is to review the additional items related to the corrective action plan for the OIGE um, pertaining to the budget committee. Um, Mr. Tantliff, do you, would you like to share your screen for these? I, I don't have anything for that. I think that was a standing item uh, that the committee had just to keep it up in the limelight. So I, I would defer to, to Mr. Kuhn if there's any other things other than the SOP part of it that that the committee would like to discuss today. I could pull up the doc. I could find pull up the document itself if that's needed. Yeah, it was just a standing item, and I don't believe we have any action uh, okay. to take at this time. It's just so that it doesn't get forgotten. Or okay, so there's no, nothing we need to discuss on that today, Mr. Kuhn. No, the real thing was the um, which you already went over, which was. OK, which we already went over. So um, the last item on the agenda then is announcements. Um, the next budget committee meeting will be on Wednesday, May 11th, 2022 at 530 p.m. Is there any further business? Ms. You, Cousy? You'd mention the CE thing if you wanted to look at that, Ms. Hank. Mr. Tantliff, yes. Can we review the CE, the differences in the CE budget? Thank you. All right. Um, let's see, I'm going to have to make this a little smaller. Uh, it's tough to fit on the screen, so like that we'll send it to you for next month or if the board wants to see it but uh, uh this is uh, probably a good way to look at it so here's the c's budget and here was the change versus uh what the board proposed so we don't need to actually see the section that's hidden let's see if i can make that a little bigger okay Okay. Uh, so, you know, just going through it quick, you can see he took out the 5% per pupil. He took out some of the staff for New Northeast Elementary School. No, they will not be understaffed, but we will need to rearrange staff uh, that we have in holdback to make sure that they are uh, fully staffed. And again, this was the non-teaching staff that goes in the school. Um, watershed is just their per pupil that's automatic by law. Special Ed, he uh, reduced about 80% of the positions requested. The elementary IEP chairs were removed, but those are actually funded in the ESSER 3 grant next year, so there'll be no impact that. And that initiative, if you'll recall, um, kicked off this year in FY22. Uh, so it's budgeted in 22 and it uh, remains in 23 in the ESSER grant. Uh, he cut the magnet. Uh, backfill of the funding that got um, lost by the grant going away. So we're working on figuring out uh, how to handle that right now, probably without most of the positions, but trying to find uh, enough per pupil so that uh, those programs can stay intact. Um, he kept the English learner proposal he kept the APs and support staff. Uh, he took out the staff development teachers. 
Uh, he took out the 1.5 million uh, that you had proposed, Ms. Hen, for the Leeds grant match. He took out the million for the alternative schools, <clears throat> special ed uh, placement. This was just inflation cost uh, in non-public placement. Vice cost reductions, of course, were were um, left in uh, career and college ready. This was added by the CE. Uh, it, this matches um, the career and college ready revenue that's coming in through Blueprint. So the revenue went up and the expense uh, went up with it. So that was a neutral item, but that wasn't completely known when the board got their budget, but it came in um, with our state aid. Um, uh, same thing with pre-K, there's uh, some expense that uh, we'll be adding that um, ties to the additional revenue we got. And then um, there was a Judy Center expansion grant that we were able to double the amount of money we could get by doing a 50% match. So that expansion resulted in the CE providing 240,000, which will enable us to get a two, 240 about on top of that. Uh, we wouldn't have got any of it without him doing the 50% match. Um, so you can see quite a few positions uh, went away, 240 out of the, you know, there's 104 remaining. So out of the 348, um, safe and supportive environment. Um, the health services position, the fiscal assistant or fiscal accountant for psych services went away. Um, that wellness stipend got removed. So, you know, that's a fairly small group. He did leave in uh, the SRO conference. Got a lot of attention. Uh, we talked about the compensation. Uh, he did keep in the $14 uh, increase for the AAs and temporary positions, which was nice. And then he left in the step, took out most of the restructurings except for a partial restructuring versus what we requested for AFSME. So that's what these negatives are. We're just getting <coughs> the COLA from 4% full year to 3% half year. You can see the step is intact because that didn't change. Uh, he left in the extended day support. Uh, I just mentioned the sub pay. Uh, he took out the salary step for the EDs and chiefs and the director scale adjustment. <coughs> he left in most of the Kelly services initiative um, but we're, we're looking at that right now since he funded two out of the 3.4 million. Um, the cabinet restructuring, we've talked about a lot. Those savings are in. Uh, and this change uh, in benefit cost reduction is, is simply due to the positions going away. And the increase here is mostly a $5 million increase in OPEB costs, which is uh, the a uh, big bucket of money that the county is holding for retiree benefits. So they increased our rate of contribution to that, as well as making some adjustments to, to projected health care costs. Um, he took out these two positions. Uh, he left, they left in, um, they did leave in the position for the coordinator of student activities. So there's that 1.0 is still there, but the ombudsman uh, got removed. And then here, a lot of the maintenance items, some of it got left in, but a lot of it got reduced. You can see here, different facilities, purifiers. Uh, like the purifiers, I think we're gonna put into the ESSER grant left in security software, uh, the panels he took out, 
Um, as you know, we're doing some pre-spending of that due to the bat. Um, same uh, took out the technology support contractors. Left in those other small items, left in all the one times. Um, and that's it in a nutshell. So it's it's really a pretty nice budget. If you think of it from a zero base standpoint, we still, you know, we got 133 positions in a year when our enrollment, um, you know, hopefully it'll rise from this year, but not none of this is enrollment driven. These are all new positions. Um, you know, it's not as favorable versus what uh, the superintendent and board requested, but, you know, I guess it's a, a glass half full, half half fall type of scenario. So the budget overall is 85 million above year ago. So, you know, that's a pretty hefty increase in uh, the big scheme of things. That is it in a nutshell. Great, thank you, Mr. Tantlin. Is this spreadsheet in board docs or can the committee be provided it? Uh, it I don't uh, see any problem. Um, Chris, Probably the best thing, maybe uh, we can ask the superintendent to in include it in the weekly package for the board. Yep, sounds like a good idea. We'll do we'll do that. Great, thank you. OK, um, I'll go around then for questions. Ms. Causey. Thank you um, and thank you for this presentation. So the um, First, I want to say it's disappointing uh, that the board's um, request for only our, you know, second board office uh, staff member, the ombudsman, to coordinate uh, with parents and students and uh, staff that have concerns uh, because board members hear a lot of concerns and yet we don't have staff to um, uh, address them. And uh, sometimes when they're forwarded to the superintendent, there's not a close the loop. Um, process. Um, so given the increase in engagement and the board's policies related to community engagement, I personally am We lost you, Mrs. Causey. Sorry, so the positions that we currently have um, were related to what student enrollment? Ta could you clarify your question? Are you saying are the staffing we have in the system today? Yes, and then versus the projections for the enrollment that we will have next year and the additional uh yeah. Well, I would say at a high level, uh, we did reduce some staffing this year to reflect the drop in enrollment, but we we did use that final enrollment that uh, the board uh, saw, and uh, we believe staffing uh, the ratios work out that there's still enough staffing even. If all of all of that came back, we'd still be pretty good. Uh, and I'd also mention there'll be several thousand kids in the virtual program next year, and those are all incremental teachers. And and what is the uh, projection based on that there'll be several thousand students in the um, remaining in the virtual program? Uh, I believe uh, I believe the concept is for about 3000 students next year. I don't know if that's okay. final yet. I think it's a maybe a little lower than this year's enrollment. OK, thank you. And that is um, funded in the ESSER budget again next year. OK, and um, I will. Um, if I have additional questions, I'll email them because I just want to take a, some time to digest this. So thank you. Sure. Thank you. Ms. Mack, or I'm, well, you had a question, um, Mr. Kuhn, and then Ms. Mack. Uh, no, I look uh, forward to 
getting the document, reviewing it, and and possibly making this um, another topic going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Mr. Tantliff, thank you for this. I have two quick questions. Um, one of the blueprint um, items is for national board certified teachers to be paid a significant amount of money. And I know that our number of national board board certified teachers is is not high, but I saw five hundred and ninety six thousand dollars. What were we trying to get ahead of the blueprint? Um, I, I see that it wasn't approved. Can you explain that a little bit? Um, sure. So starting this year, uh, nationally board certified next year, 23, uh, nationally board certified teachers get $10,000. And if they're in the, um, the, and then there's an extra $7,000 kicker if they're in the highest needs schools, which are still being defined. Right. Um, trying, I, and actually it could be finalized by now, but as of a couple of weeks ago, the last time I had a, a discussion on it, they weren't. Um, and so our initial teacher count, uh, forgive me, it was I think in the high 60s, uh, that we submitted, but it's been a little while since I looked at it. Um, and we did have some money in the budget this year uh, for that. So that was to cover the incremental cost that we were estimating at the time. I mean, you know, it was tough to know exactly how that expense will shake out, but that's what it, um, you know, that's how we went about budgeting it. So where does that money come from since the CE did not approve that if I read the line item correctly? Well, um, it, so it, it would come from, you know, the central salary fund. It, it's unlikely to be material in terms of the total salary budget in FY 2023. So that, you know, if it was several hundred thousand dollars, we wouldn't have any problem absorbing it. Now in the future, that could end up being a very significant expense and there'd be no way to go without budgeting it, but uh, I don't think it'd be any problem uh, next year just handling it in the central teacher uh, budget. And that would put us in alignment with the blueprint, correct? Uh, yes, I mean, it's man it's mandatory. There's right. you know, no, no decisions that need to be made in terms of whether we would do it. OK, all right. And then my next question is, I remember clearly that the superintendent's budget presentation had a total of 381.3 FTEs. And I was trying to add up as you went through this, do you know what we ended up getting of that 381.3? Well, basically 133.8. I mean, the board added a few positions, but this county exec added a total of 133.8 positions. Of the of the 381.3 requested across any group well, of- uh, 395.3 were requested by the time the board proposed the budget. Okay, so, okay, I see that now. And I had forgotten about that. I was just remembering the budget presentation. So of the 395.3, it was 133.8. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And again, thank you for this. Sure. Uh, one thing worth mentioning, it's actually a little better than it looks because we proposed to move 33. We reduced nine positions from the cabinet and 24 uh, blueprint positions. We on the TSI grant, we moved to special revenue. So really, he's adding 33. He's really adding, you know, 167 positions. If you want to, then it's offset by the reduction to 33. Right, but we I don't see anything on there. I thought I saw pretty significant cuts to the superintendent's request to um, beef up special education. Yes. And I was concerned right. that those changes appear not to have been fully granted. No, so special ed uh, requested 136 and they only got 22. And that's not including the IEP chairs, but again, those will be funded on the ESSER grant next year. 
So with this budget, all we're going to fund is the 22, not anything more than that with any other grants or programs? Um, I can't speak to any other grants, but in the general fund, the special ed headcount will go up by 22. OK, again, thank you very much for this. I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Mack, and I'll second those sentiments. This is fantastic, um, Mr. Tantlin. Thank you so much. This is terrific. Sure. Glad you uh, like it. Hopefully, you know, once you get it, you can have some good dinner time conversation with friends and family. <laughs> we we will. Believe me. This is <laughs> or you guys can go to Starbucks and each have a copy and uh, you know exchange notes. <laughs> This is awesome. Any other questions, committee members, before we wrap up? Let everybody get back to their evenings. All right. Okay. Thank you. Any, any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Have a great Thanks. evening. Thanks, everyone. Talk Good to you night. soon. Take care. Thank you.